So you're going to get an MRI. Not sure what to expect? Don't worry, let's go through that right now. Step 1. Make sure you don't wear any metal accessories to the hospital. This includes earring, jewelry, and watches. You'll have to take these off before the procedure, so it's best to leave them at home. Step 2. Take any medication prescribed by your doctor at the indicated time before your procedure. If you have any claustrophobia, these pills will help relax you for the scan. Step 3. Entering the machine. The MRI looks like a big donut and you'll be laying down in the middle of it for a while. It doesn't spin or move and it won't hurt you either. It will make a really loud noise that sounds like this. Step 4. Sit back and relax. Try not to move around too much or else the pictures won't come out clear and you'll have to spend more time in the machine. This can may take anywhere between 20 to 90 minutes depending on the body part being examined. Congratulations! You've just sat through an MRI scan. But wait, what just happened? Was I exposed to radiation? Was there any side effects? How did this big donut take my picture? Magnetic resonance imaging uses a magnetic field and radio waves to produce detailed 3D images without emitting radiation. This safe, non-invasive procedure is used to image soft tissues in the body, such as the brain, spinal cord, nerves, and ligaments. It helps doctors identify infections and conditions that cause swelling inside the body. But how does the MRI work? Hi, my name is Daniel Bulti and I work for the Functional Magnetic Resonance Imaging of the Brain Centre at the University of Oxford. The way that an MRI scanner works is totally different to the way that an X-ray um, machine works. The human body is full of water and a water molecule consists of two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. Hydrogen being the simplest element in the periodic table consists of just a single proton for its nucleus. And if we consider that this is an example of a single proton, as well as having a certain volume and a certain mass and a positive charge, it also has what we call a magnetic moment, which means it's a little bit like a bar magnet, or the Earth, in that it's got a North Pole and a South Pole. And so I'll represent the North Pole by attaching this screw. Now normally it's just sitting there happily spinning. But if you place it in a magnetic field, what it's going to do is it's going to start what we call processing, which means that there's going to be this sort of like rotating top motion of that magnetic pole. When this is placed, this water proton is placed in the magnetic field, and it starts to process, and it's doing it at this particular frequency. This could tell us some information about the water or the environment that the water is in. But the problem is that we can't see this tiny magnetic field because it's being swamped by the huge magnetic field that we're creating with a scanner. It's kind of like trying to see a candle in front of a spotlight. The small light is just completely overwhelmed by the large light. But what we can do is by applying a second magnetic field, which is perpendicular to the main field, the proton is going to want to try and process around that as well. But if we apply a very small field, it's going to process quite slowly. And so we apply the field for a short period of time and it will tip over a little bit. And if we then turn the field off just as it gets to that point, this proton is now going to continue to spin around the large field. And now with the large field vertical and this in a different plane, we can put a detector out to the side and we can see this rotating magnetic field. And it's going to be rotating at that very special frequency. And so that is now giving us an amount of information about how many protons have been affected in this magnetic field. And so with that, we can get a contrast. We can tell the difference between different tissue types. And now you're ready for your next MRI.